you know, as a kid growing up, you know, my parents let us kind of roam freely, unlike maybe some parents today. Part of that was being involved in scouting. I think we had good scout leaders that also kind of gave us free reign of running the program and, and doing the things that we wanted to do. And between all those experiences, getting outdoors and doing those activities, decided that's the career I wanted to have was in the natural resources field. I'm Darren Siepkin. I'm the owner of Crawdaddy Outdoors in Waverly, Iowa. Uh, we've been open since uh, 2005 and uh, we sell kayaks, canoes, camping and backpacking gear. Uh, we also do trips and events and so we just don't sell stuff to people. We also get them out on the water, get them out on the, on the land and, and have them enjoy trips and events. In the years before opening Crawdaddy Outdoors, Darren Siefkin was utilizing his love of nature in a different way. He graduated from Iowa State, majoring in fisheries and wildlife biology, and quickly found his first job in conservation. My first job out of college was at Bremer County Conservation, doing environmental education. Uh, the naturalist for the County Conservation Board got people outdoors, taught hunter education, took preschoolers on hikes, uh, look for snakes and lizards and frogs, um, all those great you know things that trying to get kids involved in the outdoors. Um, really had no interest in ever leaving that job. It was a great job, um, but a new opportunity came about with uh, working at Iowa State University Extension at the Bremer County office as the county extension director. You know, a lot of people think that the extension office is just about farming and about 4-H, uh, but it's way more than that. Um, there's still a natural resources component there. There's youth and family and 4-H, all those different things, business and industry. And so the thing I liked about that job was I still got to use some of that natural resources knowledge, uh, kind of put that spin on it with agriculture uh, and issues and concerns and problems there. Darren enjoyed his work with the Iowa State Extension Office, but he had an idea for a business that he couldn't let go. But then that next opportunity came about with starting an outdoor retail business. Um, about eight years earlier, I had started looking at the concept um, I had wrote a business plan uh, in a program through the Waverly Chamber of Commerce, which was Waverly Area Development Group at the time. Decided, well, maybe that would be an interest. Uh, talked to the original outdoor store in the area, which was Shell Rock Hardware, little thousand square foot mom and pop hardware store in Shell Rock, Iowa. Um, asked them if they would be interested in selling their business someday, and they said maybe someday. Well, fast forward nine, ten years later, and that opportunity came about. Wasn't very interested in doing it at that time. Uh, but the owner of Shell Rock Hardware said, hey, I'd love to have you do this. If you're not going to be the one that's going to do it, we're just going to close the business, sell off the inventory, and be done. Um, so initially, I still wasn't going to do it. I was getting paid well at Iowa State University. I uh, loved the job. But we went on vacation that summer in Colorado, and something just clicked about the idea of starting that business. And if I'm going to do it, it's time to do it now. With a business plan drawn up, Darren approached financial institutions to acquire capital to grow Crawdaddy. However, many bankers were hesitant to lend to the business. When you're writing that business plan and you're going to the financial institutions to come up with um, funding for your business and realizing that even though they think it's a great idea, um, they maybe think that you should keep your day job and I kind of understand where they're coming from. They're playing that devil's advocate. They're really wanting to make sure that you really have thought through this process. Uh, what it probably did for me is it probably uh, torqued me off enough to where I'm like, okay, this is gonna happen. I'm gonna prove to this bank, this banker, this community that this will work. And so I found a different source in a smaller community bank. Um, I had to go to uh, Blackhawk Economic Development for additional gap financing. Um, figured it all out, made it happen. Uh, but during this process, realizing I couldn't have this big, grandiose dream of what I wanted for a store, I had to start small, kind of work from there and kind of build up uh, to the business that we have today. Darren bought the hardware store in Shell Rock along with its inventory and started Crawdaddy Outdoors. Within the first year, he moved the business to its current home in Waverly. The pressures of pursuing entrepreneurship soon fell on Darren. The idea of starting a business is definitely scary, uh, really trying to figure out the finances, both from a business perspective and from a personal perspective. 
you know, can you still make your house payment? Can you still do all those kind of things on the personal side? Uh, when I looked at starting the business 10 years earlier, my wife wasn't interested. Uh, she didn't want to eat ramen noodles or mac and cheese every day. Uh, I don't mind those things, but things had changed in 10 years. Uh, it had changed to where uh, our finances were different. My wife was getting paid better. I'd been getting paid better. We had put away money uh, for whatever situation arose in the future. And so that kind of led to where we were comfortable giving this business a start and giving it a shot and uh, seeing how it would work. Crawdaddy's success can be largely attributed to Darren's entrepreneurial drive. But that doesn't mean he didn't have support. My wife was able to be that person I could lean on, especially when we first started with, you know, I'm not bringing any money home uh, for paying for the house and food and all those things. And so luckily, you know, she was able to take care of those things. Our personal finances were in, in good order. But just that emotional support and some of those tougher moments in the beginning where you're worried about the finances, can you pay the bills, can you pay your staff? Uh, she was there to kind of provide that moral support and, and emotional support uh, for that process. In addition to having support from Janine, Darren was welcomed by the community. It was important for Darren to start his business in a small town, and Waverly has been a perfect fit. Even though I grew up in a bigger city in Burlington, Iowa, uh, I really like the smaller communities and, and being here in Bremer County for the last uh, 27 years. Uh, it's really made me fall in love with this area. A lot of people were thinking we should be in a Waterloo, Cedar Falls, or a bigger community for a business like that. Um, but I also like to prove to people that you can get things accomplished. I wanted to prove that we could pull it off in a town the size of Waverly, 10, 11,000 people, and have an uh, effective store and a successful store. We have a good hour and a half radius around Waverly that we serve customers pretty well. People are willing to travel since we are one of the few places you can buy nicer kayaks, nicer camping, backpacking gear, uh, they're willing to travel for that. I think one of the things that helps us out to be more successful in a small community is uh, you have to do the publicity, you have to do the marketing, you have to get out there and do programs and events. You can't just sit there on Main Street and expect people to show up. It's just not gonna work. Crawdaddy Outdoors has been a community-friendly business since its inception. This focus on community paid off in 2008 when major flooding brought downtown Waverly underwater. The flood of 08 was kind of a rallying point behind our store and really, I think, kind of kicked us into gear in our customer base. Um, you know, we had 16 inches of water on the main level of our store. Luckily, we had friends that told us that, hey, you're gonna have water on the main level. This is different than 99 flood. And I will say I am not a crier. I, uh, I, I, but when I walked into Waverly that morning of the flood and I saw water in my store and everyone else's store in downtown, um, that was not a good feeling. I did, I did cry a little bit uh, for that moment. Uh, but realize, okay, we're going to get through this and uh, watch the flood happen, waited for it to recede. Um, there was a few fun moments in that process. At one point uh, during the flood, as we're all sitting in the street watching the flood in downtown, um, I made some comment about the set of stairs that was in the middle of the road. And I was like, whose set of stairs are in the middle of the road? And then I realized they're my stairs <laughs> from behind my store. We had a game plan before the flood even officially happened. My perception is I'm an outdoor store. I've got to be open. I can't be closed in the middle of the summer. And so we went at it right away, spending 14, 16 hour days uh, tearing out the flooring, tearing out the walls, the insulation that all got wet. And people just started showing up off the street. Customers started showing up and got involved. And amazingly, in 10 days after the flood happened, we were open again. Darren's love for the outdoors led to dual careers in conservation and entrepreneurship. Looking back at his success, Darren strives to be a mentor and support other entrepreneurs who are planning to invest in the community. I've been very open with uh, when new businesses come to, to Waverly and, and to downtown and go introduce myself and say, hey, if you ever have questions, concerns, problems, cons whatever, don't be afraid to ask. If I don't know the answer, we'll help you figure out who that is, whether it be the Waverly Chamber of Commerce, another business owner, 
Uh, are they trying to figure out their point of sale software? Are they trying to figure out taxes? Um, a lot of people really get in a bind because they start that business and they're excited and then like, I don't want to deal with taxes, I'll do that later. Well, the federal government and the IRS really could care less <laughs> if you uh, want to or don't want to pay your bills. They're going to still give you a ticket or not a fine, excuse me, for not paying that stuff so or dealing with it. So um, we've all been through those scenarios. We've all had to deal with those kind of things. Um, so. I'm always upfront with them like, hey, if you need help figuring out how to pay your sales tax, how to pay your employees, payroll taxes, whatever it might be, let me know, we'll help you out, we'll help you figure it out, we'll get you the right uh, solution for that. You know, if we have empty storefronts in our, in our town, then that's fewer customers coming to our town. Uh, I don't want to see people fail either. Um, I, don't, I don't want to fail, I don't want to see them fail. If they're failing, then I feel bad uh, that they're failing uh, when someone maybe could have been providing that advice or information that would have helped them out. And sometimes that's all it takes is just a little bit of, you know, rah, 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 let's go. You can do this and uh, make it happen. I'm Andy Van Fleet. I'm a partner here at Visual Logic. I'm Kurt Vanderweel, and I'm one of the partners at Visual Logic. Uh, what Visual Logic does is we do user experience design. There's a lot of bad software out there, uh, whether that's existing software or software that's being created without user experience. Our whole goal is to make software easy to use for people. What we'll do is go and understand what a user is trying to accomplish, what someone, what someone needs to get done as a task, and then we'll help design a flow of software that makes sense for that person, uh, that brings them the right information at the right time, just when they need it. Um, one easier way to think of it is we make things easy to use. Everyone knows when they use a product that's hard to use and it's frustrating. Um, that's when someone like us didn't do their job well. Andy and Kurt, owners of Visual Logic, employ a small group of designers, artists, and communicators. Over time, they have learned that working with good people and treating employees with respect is key to a healthy workplace. Their story started in the 1980s when Kurt was a college student in Cedar Falls. As I was getting my degree, people from John Deere came looking for someone who knew something about computers and media. And, um, and the college recommended that I go do a project there. And the project was to figure out how we could get a photograph onto a computer. It was, <laughs> it was a long time ago. And so uh, we started doing this really great research on, on what would you do with photographs if they were on a computer. And um, the things that we were learning started to bear some fruit and we needed to hire some people. And I didn't know anything about hiring people, um, but that didn't stop me. I just started, <laughs> I just started hiring people and we didn't know anything about how to do business. Uh, but we knew what we were doing with these photographs and we knew what we were doing that was helping people on the assembly line. It all seemed uh, very quaint, and but also very comfortable. We all were friends with each other, um, and we all liked what we were doing. But we didn't, we didn't anticipate that the work we were doing was for a specific goal and a specific point in time, and that when that goal was reached, what was gonna come after that. I ended up finding another consulting job to do, but it was out of town, and so I didn't really keep up with what was going on back at the office. And what was going on back at the office wasn't healthy. It wasn't good. And, and there wasn't enough for people to do, and, and we were really hurting. So the company at that time started shrinking through natural attrition. People could see the writing on the wall that things weren't going very well. And so quite a few people uh, left, uh, which actually at the time was good, right? <laughs> we needed them to leave. And, and since they were all friends and relatives of ours, we couldn't really bring ourselves to tell them that they needed to leave. So we were paying their salaries even when there wasn't money to pay that with. The internet age had just started and Kurt's fledgling business was folded into another by the name of Team Technologies. Kurt's department not only developed some of the first websites in the Midwest, they were also pioneering the term user experience. This is where Kurt met an intern by the name Andy Van Fleet. 
User experience didn't exist as a word yet, but companies like Principal Financial, Northrop uh, King, Seeds, were all internet applications that were being developed, and they wanted them to be user-friendly. So our focus together as a group was to try to design these internet applications to be user-friendly. Shortly thereafter, the dot-com era was in full swing. Kurt, Andy, as well as other people from their department were recruited to work for an internet startup company. And the dot-com era was such a funny era because uh, money didn't seem to make sense. Money didn't seem to be part of the equation. All that mattered was that you were the first person to market with your idea. So during the dot-com era, we worked all the time. We never stopped working. Um, we lived in a place that we called the mattresses because there was mattresses leaned up against the walls and you would work until you were too tired and then you would lay a mattress down and take a nap and then put your mattress back up and start working again. It was, it was a bit of a sweatshop environment, but we all were going towards being first to market and being, uh, being the ones that were going to be rewarded by the market because of that. Uh, and then the dot bomb happened, the, 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 the bubble burst, and, and everything started uh, collapsing pretty quickly. The company was sold, and everyone was laid off. Kurt went back to consulting work while Andy searched for another job. That was a really difficult time, you know, from the economy standpoint. Everybody was uh, in the tech field was looking for work, and myself included, and started looking for work, you know, wherever. And uh, at the same time, in order to pay bills, I was starting to do some freelance work on the side. What's interesting is a lot of people that were laid off from the dot-com company that we worked for, some of them started their own little businesses. And as a result of that, they were looking for some inexpensive marketing materials, websites, uh, logos, business cards, like the whole gamut of things. I started doing that at the same time that I was looking for a job. And the, the job market was really, really tight. And I'll give you an example of that. Um, the University of Buffalo was looking for a mid-level web designer. And they had 207 applicants for this one position. And I'll never forget that my interview was an eight hour long interview, including a presentation. And uh, ultimately, I did not get the job. But it took them two months to tell us that we didn't get the job. And I use the word we because my wife and I were on pens and needles wanting to know were we going to move to Buffalo, New York or not. After that, th those two months, I decided, you know what? Nobody else is going to control my destiny from this point forward. And my wife was on board with that. And so that's when I started uh, to formalize this business called Darning Pixels. Andy took his freelance work as a graphic designer and morphed it into a graphic design business. He would eventually employ several people. Meanwhile, Kurt's consulting work was going extremely well, and soon he had more work than he could handle. So when I started consulting again, I made a vow. I will never have another employee. Well, the work I was doing started growing, so how was I going to grow but not have employees? And so my strategy was to have subcontractors, and I found three companies that I could subcontract to. One of them was Darning Pixels, which was Andy's company. And so I contracted to them, and they each had multiple employees that were working for me. So at, so at one point, we were a company maybe of 15 people, but I didn't have to employ anybody. <laughs> and I thought I had the tiger by the tail a little bit. Um, but Andy was very smart at the time and said, you know, Kurt, you're, what you're doing is you're, you're moving the risk over to somebody else. And if this is really going to grow, uh, you're going to have to share in some of that risk. And so we made, a, we made an agreement with each other that if he needed to hire more people only because he was feeding my, my work, then we would, we would pull the trigger and merge our two companies. And uh, that, that happened not that long later. Their two companies merged and they started to do business together under the name Visual Logic. Now teamed up together, Andy and Kurt's past experiences and lessons learned helped steer their company. For somebody that's looking to transition from a job that they may have to starting their own business, and they think that it's scary because there's no safety net being an entrepreneur, I learned that there's no safety net at all. 
And so where would you rather be? Would you rather be starting your own business or having your own business and, and having the freedom that comes with that? And yes, there's risks there, but there's risks in working for somebody else as well, which I found out because in the dot-com startup that uh, they sold, let everybody go, right? There's no safety net there. There's no safety net uh, in, in being an entrepreneur either. Um, and so that's one of the things that we really try to focus in on around here is that um, we're very transparent with our team about where we're at financially and where we're at uh, as a mission and, and what the goals are of the company and, and people have that transparency so that we can share with them the, the nuances of what's happening so that hopefully they do feel safe. Uh, as uh, in this version, in this in this era of Visual Logic, we have uh, we have had downturns, and we've stayed loyal to our staff, and we have paid people for long periods of time when they weren't uh, bringing in income for us. It's just part of how both the Andy and I have decided to work. We both worked in, um, during the dot com era. We both worked for companies that that we could tell we're having problems. And we were both nervous. As employees, we were both nervous all the time. We had one particular um, boss who you could tell what the finances of the company were by how big the sore on his chin was <laughs> because he would nervously rub it. Um, but, but that just made us nervous. And so when we started our business, one thing we said to each other was, we want our employees not to have that kind of nerves if we can. We wanna, we wanna be so fiscally conservative that our employees know that they're being protected. And we wanna tell our employees that if you see a downturn, it doesn't mean we're gonna let people go right away. Uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna hang on as long as we can. Some may think that the success of a tech company relies on new technologies, risk-taking, or finances. But Andy and Kurt have learned that just like with user experience, people are what matter most in business. We don't treat our customers or our uh, employees as objects. We treat them as friends. We are highly relational in, in everything that we do, in our relationship with our bank, in our relationship with our insurance agent, in our relationship with our staff, um, in our relationship with the community. We're highly re relational. And I think, I think that's right. I think that's the right way to do it. Sometimes it's harder. Sometimes I look at other businesses and I think, wow, that ruthless person um, really succeeded, really did something great. But I understand that it's not worth that. It's not worth doing that to get that end result. Um, I guess I would rather stay small and, and have the relationships that I have than to be ruthless and, and succeed. Mm -hmm.